Welcome back to Basic Bananas Radio, where we share tried and tested ways to grow your brand and get more customers. Everything from the latest in marketing and branding, right through to growing your team and creating an irresistible culture. Hi, and welcome back to Basic Bananas Radio. Today, I am talking to Julia Yord, who is an incredible sales strategist and also professional negotiator. And we're talking about some of the things businesses get wrong when it comes to selling and also some really practical sales strategies and sales techniques that you can apply in your business straight away. Let's jump in. Hey, Julia, welcome back. So great to see you for the second time in seven days. (laughs) Yes, lucky us. (laughs) Very lucky. We ran a session last week with Julia on LinkedIn, LinkedIn Mastery, and everyone loved it. The feedback has been incredible. People are asking for the replay. So really appreciate you sharing your knowledge on LinkedIn Mastery. Now, you are known for your infinite sales system. And you've also got a book coming out called From Pitch to Profit. You've been doing sales for 20 or so years, even though you look, you know, you must have started, you know, when you were in your nappies. <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk about sales today for our listeners here at Basic Bananas Radio. And maybe we start off actually by talking about the difference between marketing and sales and why you need both. Yeah. So I know that especially um, it's great when I get to talk to people like yourself, Francisca, because I love helping um, businesses to to get this right. And, you know, when we all start business, some of us start by coincidence, some of us start business um, by circumstance, and some of us start because we have a passion or an interest. And for me, what I find is fascinating is that Uh, And also the sad side, as you know, when you start a business, Francisca, the odds are against you, right? The odds are against us. Very few of us make it. And there are many things we have to get right if we're going to survive in business. And one of the things that, that really helps us to do that is revenue, right? If we can't get our revenue stream right and have consistent revenue coming through the doors, then the doors will close or unfortunately many of us will be working for free. So I want to give some um, some some knowledge and share some knowledge with your listeners, um, with our audience today to really help them that can make a difference in what they're doing. Because what I see a lot in business, especially in small business, there's some misconceptions between selling uh, sales and marketing. So even when I worked corporate, um, people would say, oh, Julia, you're in sales and marketing. And I would say, nope, nope. And even still now with the company that I run, people say, oh, you're a sales and marketing person. No, nope, I'm not. I very much stick in my lane. I'm a sales strategist. So sales and marketing are very, very different disciplines. But as you know, we have to play nicely together. And the the more cohesive sales and marketing work together, uh, the the more optimal your business is going to be. But many businesses actually get this wrong. And one of the things that breaks my heart in business, especially if I'm talking to small business, is Companies who have saved up truckloads of money, and you will probably find this as well, Francisca, as we've we've just bought and got a brand new website. And they say, we've launched the website and, 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 and we didn't get any business from it. So there's so much more. So this is an important function. Yes, of course, having a website is important. But how you can actually convert off the back of that and actually make revenue for your company, that's the big needle mover here. Yeah, I'm glad that we're talking about this. And and I couldn't agree more about marketing and sales being different disciplines, but they work. However, they have to work together. So marketing is about attracting people. Sales is about getting those people that we attract to actually want to spend their money with. Yeah, when it comes to and it used to be when I used to work in corporations, it used to drive when the marketing and the sales department were not working together they were completely separate they didn't talk with each other and hoping that then they can maximize the money that they spend on marketing doesn't work like that you have to work together so what are some of the things business owners get wrong when it comes to sales yeah, they haven't. And, and and some of these rules depend on what they're selling. So in my company, um, Francisca, 
we best so again and we talked about this the other day on our on our um webinar that when you start in business if you have something to sell the most important thing is you have to have clarity around who you sell it to and so uh i don't know about you but when i started in business six years ago i could help everybody uh this is a terrible strategy <laughs> so if you have something that you think you can help everybody yeah. that's not going to work so i too started out that way uh, now, I can't help everybody. I'm very clear about who my target market is. So one thing that businesses do get wrong is they try and sell to everybody. Now, when you sell to somebody, which is, you know, pick a lane and stick to it, business actually becomes easier. So, and this is the crossover between sales and marketing, right? Your messaging has to reach the people you want to talk to. So in my company, my target market are my target market is B2B organizations in a medium size, um, and they turn over probably around about 30 mil uh, per year onwards. But my information I'm going to share today is also completely relevant for smaller businesses too. But this is where the crossover becomes interesting because if if you're if our listeners don't have their target market right, they will struggle to make sales because your messaging from marketing won't be correct. Exactly. You're not going to be talking and sharing your message with in, in a way that resonates with who you actually want to buy it. So one thing that I see um, go wrong all the time is targeting everybody. And you would see this too, Francisca. I'm, I'm almost certain, right? People are like, I want to everybody or I don't know who my target market is. Once you narrow down on that and that, you know, we do that many ways and that's a marketing function. I'm not going to step into that lane, but business be, actually becomes easier. Because when you have that target market, your sales conversations become much clearer and much more, much more smooth and your process becomes easier, not easy, easier. So in my company, my target market are B2B companies and ideally my clients are doing deals themselves worth tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars. So my clients are doing bigger deals. But again, the principles I'm going to share today are highly transferable for smaller deals and for smaller for smaller companies as well. Yeah. So so first, big one of the biggest mistakes we we see here all the time, as you say, is clarity on the audience and not targeting everyone. I have <laughs> battles, if we want to call it a battle, with our members all the time. That I say, hey, come on, let's do this. Let's let's find the right audience, and we can do this through experimentation. Again, this is a marketing function. What else? What are some other things businesses get wrong and then let's look at some of these sales principles too. Yeah, one of the things that I see that's completely underestimated in business, whether you're a small business or you're a, a, a massive business, is I see businesses prioritize, which is great for you, Francisco, not great for me, is I see businesses plan and prioritize and budget for marketing. So they, they have a budget in place and they know, they sign up to business knowing and wanting marketing. So that includes website, lead generation, um, online presence, maybe some SEO work. So they sign up knowing and wanting marketing. What they, what I've never heard a business person say is, you know what we should do as a small business? We should set some money aside and put a sales process in place. No one's ever said that. So, so businesses definitely prioritize marketing, but this is only part of it. And as you've said before, you know, the role of marketing is around your messaging. The output of marketing is it brings people to your website or to your Facebook group or to your Instagram or into your bricks and mortar store or into your contact us page. That's marketing function. Sales, the role of sales is to talk to that human to get them to convert. That's the part that I'll spend time talking about today. Perfect. I love that. And it's actually something we, we even though we are a marketing mentoring organization, we, yeah, we start with marketing and having a marketing ecosystem. And then we also look at, but now what? Now you have all these people coming, but how can you convert more people, the, more of the right people? So should we look at some of the sales principles that you teach also in your book? Yeah. So, um, so my upcoming book is called From Pitch to Profit. And, uh, this is a book that's designed for anyone, um, in business who essentially wants to make revenue. Now, what's really interesting is that this book has been designed for people in business. So whilst it's still broad for this business, this book can serve anybody. It still is, is looking to help people who are in that B2B space who are ideally doing larger deals, but the principles are highly transferable. 
So what I I don't have expertise to comment on today, Francisca, is people who are doing um, uh, probably lower end uh, or, or or lower cost sales or widgets. So the sales principles gonna, principles I'll share with you today are for people who probably have some time in their buying cycle. So for example, they might interact with another human. And it takes that person, a prospect, maybe some time to decide if they want to buy from them. They're not exchanging it. So it's not for online purchases um, where I'm using Stripe or, or I'm using, um, um, you know, shopping carts online. The principles I share with you today are for, for our listeners who are doing deals that probably take time um, and possibly require interacting with a human to influence them to purchase. So other mistakes okay. that are made, and one big one that I see all the time, uh, is a phrase that I've coined, which is called the show up and throw up. The show up and throw up is when you get in front of your prospective customer and you vomit your greatness all over them. You talk all about your product or your service or how do I get it or where does it come from or how is it made or who delivers it or when can you get it? Is it red or is it orange? So the show up and throw up is when people, so people in business, are doing the, uh, they're vomiting their greatness all over somebody. But what's interesting is that the research tells us that this is one surefire way to lose trust. The customer research tells us that when people are buying, they don't want to know all about your greatness. What they actually want to know is what problem you're going to help them solve. So you need to shift your language for how you actually talk. And the phrase that we want to focus on is you want to sell the problem that you solve not the product that you sell. So I'll say that again. You want to sell the problem that you solve, not the product you sell. Yeah, I love that. And and probably, and, and I might already talk about one of your next principles. I find a really great way to do that is not even telling them straight up, but actually asking a question. Yes. <laughs> and I, I might let you talk about this because it is your thing. As so a, this, a is very, this is a very smart way to interact with people. And again, on that same principle of selling the problem that you solve, not the product you sell, the way we do that is by asking questions rather than delivering statements. So asking questions. So um, I'll get you to think on your feet here, Francisca. Can you think of one of your members at the moment um, and, and tell me just in maybe generic terms what it is that they sell? And I will try and think on my feet and give some um, hot tips straight off the or hot off the press here. Can you have you yeah, got a like specific to, member in mind? Yeah, heaps of members. We're, we're doing a social media experiment right now, so you can pick between a um, uh, business that does really cool toys for kids, but that might be a little bit more on the lower end uh, in terms of price point. Or we can talk about someone who does experiences on cruises. So okay. so. Adventures, like yes. cruise adventures, for example. That yes. Could be one. Yes. Um, even I've actually just thought I probably should have just even used basic bananas as an example too, right? Because you're selling okay. membership services, right? So mentoring, yeah. I might actually use that as my example because I can probably it, do yeah. that faster. So if I was um basic bananas selling my services to somebody, rather than saying, here's what you get in the membership, here's how much it costs, you get access into this Facebook group, you get uh, access to our Instagram account, we have members-only events, it's only this much per month, this is how the other members are, it's lots of peer learning, this is the show up and throw up, right? I'm just throwing at you all the things that you get. Here's what you want to learn from us. We're great because collectively we have like, you know, 50 years experience in this space. This is how many small businesses we serve. That's that that's focusing on the product right, yeah. itself. Instead, imagine if the conversation to your point, it was asking questions. And if I was talking to a small business owner, I'd be asking questions that are open style questions. Open questions start with who, what, when, where, why, how, and my favorite, tell me. So asking questions like, so tell me how business is going for you at the moment. Hey, what's brought you to have a conversation today with Basic Bananas? Huh. Who in your industry that you compete with is doing marketing that you feel that you'd love to, you know, doing something like? What would you love your customers to be saying about you? What fears do you have about um, having large marketing presence? Tell me about uh, some of the greatest wins you've had in your small business so far. How is marketing holding you back? What do you see is marketing? How would you measure marketing? 
Who else are you learning from in business? How do you know what is the difference between a good marketing um, program and a great marketing program or a good marketing community and a great marketing community? How do you know when you found the right professional to invest your time and finances into? If you had marketing correct in your small business, what would that look like? What would be the impact if you just kept going the way you were and didn't change anything? So these types of questions completely shift the conversation and allow us to really connect with somebody to find out what problems they actually want to solve. And without even knowing anything about what anyone sells, the most common denominators that everybody wants to solve in their lives are they want to save time, save money, they want to mitigate risk, and they want to get competitive advantage. Those are the generally, so for all the people that are listening today, have a think about those four things, save time, save money, mitigate your risk, and increase your competitive advantage. Are there any of those four things that you think, oh, we definitely don't do that? And I'm going to hazard a guess that your listeners will be thinking, that's what we want to do. So we need to be able to serve up our information in customer language, not our language. Exactly. There are so many gold nuggets in there. And, you know, some of the, the ones that I'd like to highlight is that the, I, that's my, what, what I believe is that the more that we talk, the less they're likely to buy. The more that we ask great questions and get them to talk, the more likely they will buy in. And also this process helps us to find out whether this person is actually the right person. For, yes. our, for us here, for example, for our mentoring programs, because oftentimes they're not. And then we will find out the way that they talk. We will know, hey, actually, it's probably not quite the right thing for you right now. How about we have another option that is not us yes. as a solution? So I think that's so good. I'd like to add something here that, that I love. Also, let's say if we're talking to someone that is not necessarily inquiring, but let's say we go to a party and someone is asking, hey, what do you do? Actually, I'll ask you. So let's go. Let's say you're out at the party or at a networking event, and people are Julia. What What do you do? What would you suggest people? How people respond? Because that's when they normally do the throw up and what do you call this? Show throw up, up, show up, and throw up. Show up and throw up. Yeah. What would you say instead? <laughs> okay. So this is a fascinating scenario because this is the number one question that people in business hate yes. being asked. Yes. It's the so what do you do question, right? And people don't like this question because it's awkward. They wonder, how long do I have to talk for? Do I have to tell them my services? Do I pitch? And we can get caught out by talking too much here mm -hmm. where this is a terrible strategy. So if I'm at a social event uh, or if I'm at a business event and someone asks me, I'm always armed to do two things. The first thing is give a very short but clear explanation of what I do. But the second thing is I'm prepared also to make a genuine but purposeful shift in the conversation so I can make it clear I'd love to learn actually about somebody else. So in that scenario, if we were at a social event, our Francisca, and we bumped into each other, we exchanged our names. Oh, Francisca, my name's Julia. How's it going? And you're going to say, so, Julia, what do you do? I would say, oh, Francisca, um, I run a, uh, a business consultancy firm. Uh, I'm a sales strategist and a professional negotiator. We work with service-based organizations to teach a repeatable process to actually help them convert more clients and to increase their margins. I'd love to ask you, what brings you along to this event today? So I give a very clear explanation of what I do, but I also want to make it clear I'm, I'm like to show, I'd like to show interest in someone else. And they're going to do one of two things. They're either going to go, oh, that sounds really interesting, Julia, tell me some more. Or they're going to go down and tell me why they turned up at this event today. If they want to go down the path of me telling them um, some more, I'm very purposeful here. I, I would say, oh, Francisca, um, I'd love to share a bit more, but I always feel a bit awkward in social events talking about my work. But, um, you know, happy to do that another time. Maybe we should coffee sometime. And so in that instance, we might exchange numbers or chat a bit more and we might have a coffee another time to learn more about each other. Um, but yes, I'm always very, very conscious never to pitch in a social setting or at a sundowner or at a networking event. Short explanation, shift the conversation. Yeah, I agree. One thing that, that, that I'm experimenting with at the moment, and I, I've told our members that too, and some are, people are having really great results is instead, so let's say somebody asks, Hey, Hey, what do you do, Francisca? And instead of actually telling them is, is asking them, do you, for in my example, it would be, do you know someone, maybe a friend or a family member who runs a business? 
Yeah. You know how sometimes they struggle making enough cash or you know how sometimes they struggle attracting clients and they're like, yeah, yeah, my, my dad used to be a business owner and it was so painful, you know, blah, blah, blah. And then you would say, well, so we we show these business owners how to do great marketing so that they don't struggle. So it's almost like putting them into a situation that they can yeah. comprehend. Storytelling also. Yeah, very helpful. yeah. exactly. Exactly. And you can, you can apply this to anything, which is which is really cool. Now, I know we're coming up to time. What what are some other principles that you really want to share that, you know, will help our listeners? Yeah, the, the biggest thing I would I would share and um, the whole reason I actually have a business is because this problem exists. Lots of people in business put effort, time, money, finances, resources into marketing. And they and they feel like that's the end of the line you need to continue and have a, a repeatable sales process in your business. So putting effort into learning how to convert those opportunities, because if you can't convert those opportunities that marketing has brought in, you've just wasted all your money. So what you should do is just take up your money that you're going to invest next year and just light it up in a pile of smoke. Because sales, the output of sales is to actually convert that convert those opportunities and actually bring you in the revenue. So this is the whole reason I have a company. It's because so many businesses don't appreciate um, that after marketing, the work has to continue into sales. So for me, Francisca, um, yes, of course, I have an invested interest in this problem because this is how I serve businesses. But if you are in business and you are, especially if you're investing into your marketing, then you need to invest time, effort, resources, finances into your sales and sales process to make sure that you can convert those at the back end. Otherwise, you've got great leads and you'll never convert them or you're converting the wrong types. So a sale, so please, please, if I can share with the listeners to put emphasis on learning sales, be good at sales, because that's actually what makes the revenue come in. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. And on that note, we will put also a link to your book from Pitch to Profit in the show notes. Is there any other anything else that any final words and also how can people connect with you? Yeah, thanks, Francisco. I'd love people to connect with me on LinkedIn. Um, I, I follow a principle on LinkedIn, which is about being generous with sharing my expertise. I genuinely want businesses to get better at sales uh, and sales conversations and negotiation skills. So I share a lot of information on LinkedIn where people can learn for free. Um, You can just troll my posts and you can learn a whole lot of information of how to actually improve revenue in your business just by doing that. So I'm just Julia Ewart, E-W-E-R-T. You'll find me on LinkedIn. um, And that's where you'll find lots of videos, lots of resources to help. Great. We'll post the link in the show notes too for your LinkedIn and your book. Again, Julia, thank you so much for joining us today. Really appreciate you as always. Thanks, and you sharing your knowledge so generously. Now, let's go out, listeners, and change our conversations. And instead of show up and throw up, maybe we can ask some really cool questions that people will remember. Thanks again for tuning in, and we'll see you next time. To get more from Basic Bananas and to learn new ways to grow your business with clever marketing, visit basicbananas.com.